and welcome. A bit exciting. I've had to come to the next town um, to come to the store to collect a box. This is the pump I've been waiting for. Um, but since we've had to come here, we're just going to drive. Um, we're just going to drive past the theatre and have a quick look. I haven't been here since the last grass cut. Here we are. There's my theatre. See how I never quite got the windows finished. Anyway, work in progress. See what we can hear when we turn the engine off. Nothing. Nothing at all. And there could be nothing for hours. Days, maybe. Hello again from my bench. So if I'm right, I've just shown you a clip or maybe a, a 15 minute video of my trip to go and get this pump. So we're back on the plumbing. It's minus 24 outside this morning. And once again, I've just, we got things to do. So for those of you watched my pump video, I'll put a link. This is a circulation pump. This doesn't pump under pressure. This is the size of connection, which is a three quarter inch, 22 mil, um, that we add on the tank down in the cellar. Well, you know when you order stuff on the internet, and I don't, anyway. And then when it arrives, you have that gut sickly feeling that the picture was, uh, hmm, not to scale. And uh, what you thought you were buying is not what actually arrived. Well, I need a pump to push under pressure. Um, and I saw this pump and it's designed, it's a 12 volt pump, and it's designed to push up to 10 bar, it said in the advert. And it looked like it had 15 mil connections to it and it's for a mobile home or a shower or a trailer or, so I have to do this trip to get this pump, and it was cheap, and it is made not in the US. Right. 
So this is what's arrived. Okay? Oh, I don't care, I need a pump. However, this tiny little bit here is the pump that pushes under pressure. And the outlets, we have the 10 mil on the outside. Less than quarter of an inch, five millimeters. Right, that's my bore. So I've gone from 22 to five, or from three quarters to less than a quarter. Okay, so now I have to work this out. So this is the hard copper pipe I plumbed into the heating system. And amongst all my stuff here, I've managed to find two, by some miracle, reducers, 15 or 10 mil. You know, I'm gonna drive you lot mad. 15 mil. Well, it's in, it's in metric. I can't keep going back. So I can work in imperial and metric in, in lumber, but all, all this. Anyway, so I've now got to connect up two lots of hard pupper. I'm not going to connect this to the big tank yet. I'm just going to run some flexios off of it because on the pump itself, on the advert, it says it pushes to 10 bar. Right On the pump itself, it's got a 5.5 .5 bar cutoff. Well, it's designed for taps and showers, so it's on all the time. When you turn tap off, pump shuts down. When you turn tap on, pump starts. I'm not sure. Firstly, it's not as described. Don't even go to sending it back and or just... The journey will cost more to go post this than I paid for the pump. So. There's plenty of applications for a small pump. We need it for this one. We're going to see if we can make it work. So I'm going to connect all this up. I've got two pieces of flexibly reinforced pipe, a bit of hard copper pipe, my pump, my reducers, and two other flexi lines that were for faucets, I believe. I think these comes off of faucets. We've got a 10 mil outlet. So now if we look at the bore in there, We could be down a sixteenth of an inch. Anyhow, we connect this lot together and then take it down and just see if we can pump against the pressure of the header tank. If we can pump against the header of the pressure tank, then I've got a result. And, and I only need this to work occasionally. It's just an occasional thing. However, if it's white and it shuts off, a 5.5 .5 bar, that's 100 PSI, I could have it wired in all the time, but that's not going to benefit me because it's a 12 volt system. Right, anyway, let's see how we get on. Oh, and uh, the pipes obviously are quite hard because everything is old and knackered. And uh, we're going to have to do the old hot water trick to get it to work. And we need to cut that off. I'll get myself into trouble. Dirty old things in cups from the kitchen. There isn't enough uh, hot water in the tanks. I never made any hot water yesterday. And um, so the tanks, the hot water tanks are cold, so I've had to boil a kettle. You don't want to be doing that any more than you have to. And um, yeah, I forgot to take a suitable container from here to the kitchen. Anyhow, there we go. Once you've warmed these, once you've warmed the pipes up, should be. Easy, he says. And of course it'd have to be one of those tall cups that's just dying to tip over and just generally make a mess everywhere, right?
Right, easy when you've got a cup of hot water. Just put that somewhere where it's going to be clean. Before you ask, man splits. Now you could say it's emulating Michael Jackson. I don't think he had man splits in his hand. Anyway, I have. So, um, I've put, uh, not, not a nice perfumed, moist, anyway. So I put cream on my hand and then I put a glove on and I wear it for a few days and it softens the skin and then I can get in there and cut the skin out and then the split will grow back without the crack and it won't continuously open. Cracks and splits, they're just, uh, Anyway, that's what that is. Okay. So now we've got this scenario. With the pump in the middle. So before we go connecting up to the tank, because this is a self-priming pipe, I think I should be able to connect this one up to the heating system and just dunk this one in the many buckets of uh, uh, fluid that is waiting to go back in there. And I don't think we need to worry about that tank at the moment to make sure this works. So, what we do now is we connect this end here. Let's check the flow direction. Yep, yeah, because that would be a mistake if we connected that the wrong way around. We should be able to test this to see whether I've made yet another mistake. That could do with some crocodile clips on there. This stuff, this is a, like a heat shrink tube for electric connectors. It's so easy to bodge an electrical connector which will continuously haunt you, let you down and fail. And yet, the actual process of doing the job properly isn't that much longer than bodging it. So it's really easy for me to put on some kind of connector onto this cable to connect these crocodile clips. It's, it's just easy for me to do that. Um, easy for me to bodge it, however, right? It don't take much longer to not. It'd be nice to know which one's positive and which one's negative. We're going to make the assumption, right? The assumption, being the mother and father of all aunties and uncles, I'm not even going to bother I'm not even going to bother with a soldering iron. I'll just cut myself a couple of two inch sections of that. Slide them out the way because if they get hot, they'll shrink. <laughs> and if you've shrunk them before you've got them over your connection, you can, uh, you can slap yourself for that one. So twist the wires together. Right, you, you all must know how to do this, but for those that don't, I'll make it brief. Bit of flux. Bit of solder. See if we can set ourselves on fire. Get these hot, melt that flux. Map gas, it's a really hot gas. It's gonna just destroy everything in moments if you're not really, really careful.
Right, where is the test? All right, let's see if this will not only self-prime, but also pump and then empty this jug of water, which you can't see, because now I've put you too far away. Oh, apparently that's a negative, and apparently this is a positive. Self-priming. Right, and if does that pump self prime, which is what we wanted, no matter how hard I press over the end, I can't create 10 bars to turn that off. That means it's going to pump against the pressure. It ain't going to be the fastest pump in the world, but we don't need to. We only need to pump in what we need to pump in once or twice a year, and then a little top up occasionally. So this is going to be ideal. Maybe I didn't make a mistake. Because I definitely made a mistake with the circulation pump, as those that you've been watching know, that error, time wasted, this got a couple of, I think I might have over, well you know why I over engineered it the first time, because I was trying to do it without spending any money with things I had lying around. And now I can still do it with things I've got lying around, but I have had to buy this, and it was cheap. <sighs> We're having a jump around again, it's in the middle of that job, but Casper needs to exercise is right to be mad for a bit my hand just got stuck to the door handle anyway let's entertain this muppet for a bit That's a project waiting. I always think the birch trees look spectacular, and they do. I mean, it always looks spectacular, but the birch trees hold themselves in a certain way through the winter. Oh. Okay, always nice to come out into the furnace room after being outside. And uh, I thought I was going a bit soft because I could only manage 72 seconds outside without my gloves on before my hands said, oh no, that shouldn't be happening. But um, surprisingly enough, it's warmed up a bit to 12 degrees, minus 22. So that's, uh, that's a bit better. We can last a bit longer outside at that temperature. I've done a bit of messing around and a bit of practice just because I wasn't quite sure. Let's put a light on. 
just because I wasn't quite sure how catastrophic a mistake I had made with this tiny little pump. So you can see there's there's a bit of water on the floor. What I'm going to do so we can positively identify what we're doing is I have marked this tank already. We're going to mark the tank again on the line. Right. <coughs> so, this was the big tank that I am going to connect this up to because this is how I want to use it. And this is the small pump and I've got one end in the barrel and the other end, as you saw me connect upstairs, is now hard plumbed into the heating circuit. And it's got an automatic shut off valve, so we should be able to connect it. Right. So the problem I had to start with was, it's a self priming pump and it will self prime against negative pressure. So if there's no fluid in it and you put one end in there and switch the pump on, yes it will prime against negative pressure. However on this side we either have a closed circuit when the tap is closed or when we open it we have four bar of reverse pressure and it would not prime either with that tap in the closed position or with reverse positive four bar of pressure. We had the same problem with the big pump, so I had to prime it. So what I did was crack this nut here, this lower nut, turned on the pump and allowed it to prime all the way up until it squirted out of there, and then I done that, and then it works. So, in theory, now, because it's shot off against pressure, when I open this tap, even though there's four bar of reverse pressure, the pump should pump. There we go, works. So whilst this should be a completed circuit against this, this is my overflow coming down from the attic, five floors up. It's gonna run into that and fill the tank, but we've had to disconnect the tank. So underneath where I've disconnected the pump for a moment, I've just got a bucket. We need to pump as much fluid as we can into the circuit until it comes out in that bucket. Then we know we've got a, a completed circuit at the right level. And the reason I say that is because we had to drain some fluid out and we're gonna to have to drain more fluid out when I do the plumbing that those that you are regular watchers know. But before I can do all of that, I've got to make sure I can get the chemicals that are in the system back in the system quickly and I can't disconnect any of the plumbing while the temperatures are at minus 22 or 12. I need it to be I need it to be above 22 degrees minus 10 before I attempt to do that uh, and I've got to only do things a little bit at a time so if I make a mistake I can close off the quarter of the system that I've got open and refill with fluid, if that makes any sense. Otherwise, we're gonna freeze up. So, I'm short on antifreeze in the system. So I could put in some of this stuff that we drained out last week, but I'm not. I'm making sure that we're topped right up on our antifreeze because 
even with the heating system running, this lovely big furnace of mine, we have had pipes freeze that go through the concrete cellar walls in the middle of winter and knock out a quarter of the building, which is 16 radiators. Outgoing water temperature. Can't see what that is because I've been looking at a light. Fan is burning well. Look at that. Very nice. Pump pumping. It's going to be a good day. Furnace furnacing. So it's not the fastest pump in the world, but it is pumping against that positive pressure. And that's what we need. And I've been so badly needing to get this into the system. So when we have fluid coming out of there, we have the right amount of fluid in the system. And at that point I can shut that tap off. And on a normal, on a normal winter then, this isn't going to be normal because I've got to install some more radiators and therefore drain down part of the system. But in a normal winter, you would do this in October and complete the circuit, check the antifreeze level. You would probably only need to turn it up maybe once, turn it on again maybe once or twice during the course of the entire winter and only if you boil the tank over. So how do you boil the tank over? Well, it's a complex system. It's an industrial system. And every time you turn from heat into water, you have to uh, change all the valves over, switch pumps off, switch pumps on. If you make a mistake or forget a valve or a pump, it will boil the header tank. That will expand the water and you'll lose some water, which used to go down there to drain. But I've cut this pipe, I've explained this, I've cut this pipe and now it's going to go into this tank. And this tank is going to hold the overflow from the overflow without sending any chemicals down the drain so that when it all cools, cools down I can pump it back into the system. What we don't want to do right, is run that pump dry. The antifreeze and stuff. So when it used to overflow or boil over before, this stuff used to go down the drain. And that's not good. We don't want to be not only wasting it, sending any kind of chemicals down the drain because whilst there is, whilst there is a heat treatment plant in the village, our waste water goes to river. And I fish in the river and so does everybody else. Fishing, swimming, without the river, we wouldn't be here. So um, I think I have said this, and I think I have said this, that pump is designed for um, trailer, mobile home, caravan, camper vans, RVs, it's for a faucet and shower pump, um, and it's cheap, made offshore, uh, but it works, it works. So that's the second time I've bought a cheap pump now to do jobs that I can't do in the last two weeks. Both of them have been successful. The first one, we're, we didn't know about the first one, we don't need to go there again. Anyway, let's keep pumping this and we'll wait till it, it returns. It's kind of hard to know what everybody wants and I can't appeal to the masses. I, I can't. I'm not Mr Beast, thankfully. And uh, even when you've produced what you think is a good video, like the one on the chandelier yesterday, you know, I had uh, three subscribers unsubscribe as a result of that, probably because it wasn't a big machine or snow ploughing or uh, I don't know what it was. Or maybe I just talk too much and they just can't deal with it. No problem. There's no hard feelings, really. If you want to unsubscribe, go. Three went that way. Seven came this way. Congratulations and welcome to the seven. But there are a few people and half the reason that... I started this channel was to share my skills with my friends and family and the fact that you many, many thousands of people also enjoy watching, well, I'm humbled, really I am, 
So this is the bit where there's no machinery and there's no music and there's no fast forwarding. And those of you that have got a short attention span, you can fast forward or go and make a cup of coffee or whatever it is that you do or unsubscribe. It, it's not going to hurt my feelings. It's not for everybody. I'm not for a lot of people. It's probably why I live in the forest. Right. Let me show you where I've got to. So I'm going to put you down on the bench and I'm going to talk while showing you what I'm doing. Now the next job is connect up to the bottom of the tank. And um, I took the fitting out the bottom of the tank. This is not the exact fitting, it's the same as. And you can see the hole of the size in the bottom of the tank. Okay? I need to go from that to that. So I collect everything, as you've probably gathered by now. And in order to go from that to that, I've inserted this. I found this. Somebody's brazed this up years before. This will screw onto here, and this will screw into there. Now, there's no olives or tight fittings. Right, that's not too loose on that. That's really loose on that. There's two ways that with what I've got and what I can do, I can put this together. I can hot solder these two. In which case they're permanent, never to come apart. Run solder and flux in there, permanent, never to come apart. However, what I've learned since being here is there's an alternative. And this is kind of like a horsehair string, a plumber string. And this is a blue jet plush. Right, they call it a multi-purpose sealant. It, it, it's for plumbing. It's a nasty old goo. So this, mixed with that and tightened up, water seals and pressurises everything. Possibly up to 20 or 30 bar. We need a good pressure up to 10 bar. So I have a, a, a screw in here like this because this is nasty old stuff. And then I use the screw because it pushes it in the threads. Now... I probably use a lot more of this than I need to. And out of all the joints that I've sealed up with this, I've only had one leak. So I'm going to maintain my method of using enough to do the job. So I'll put that in there like that. That's probably way, way too much in there. Probably overdone that. And then around this thread. Like this. And I get my string. And if I just use it in this big lump, it don't work so well. You can spread this out and get it into the threads. And when you've got a loose joint, ideally, you're not locking against the butt. It's thread locking. So you're locking one thread against another. And then once I pulled that over, I also put some more of this around here. Right, and the surplus just comes off. So it's more important to me that I do this joint once. And then that has got a thread Onto there, I could have run the string around the other way if I'd been thinking about it, but it will seal up nevertheless. And then this one the same, but we'll run the string the right way. Right, I'll do those up tight, and then I'll show you the result. Right. And there we go. And what that does is it allows me to go from a hole this size down to a hole that size. And it's all a bit extreme, really, but it's about using what you've got and not buying lots of expensive stuff. And I've got these. So 
Oh, I can use them and they're not set aside for another purpose other than the stuff that I've collected in case I need it. Well, today I need it. So we're going to refresh this bit of string and goo here and then take it down and fit it to the tank. Right, so we've got this tank on the floor. I've done all that. I hope that's the right thread. Yep. Right, let's tighten that up. Connected up the tank, fitted the pump on the wall. So for those of you who are not familiar with this, the whole reason behind this three week saga is because firstly, there's no easy way for me to put glycol or sealant chemicals into the heating system. And every time it overfills, it goes to drain, which dilutes my antifreeze and puts it straight into the drain, which eventually leads to our river. Really bad. So, we've had to bite the bullet and purchase the pump, which was just so unbelievably cheap. Everything else I've used is what we've had. So, as a quick reminder, I've cut off the pipe that used to go to drain and then I've put on this flexi pipe which now is in a clear bottle and as you can clearly see dripping into this tank so once I put the 40 litres of antifreeze in I've then topped the system up with fresh water which means now the header tank in the attic is completely full and overflowing that's where this tank comes into this tank is essentially an empty holding tank this allows me to put chemicals in. It allows me to capture all the overflow when it occurs. And it occurs when you overfill a system and when you boil the system over. And prior to that, everything goes to drain. Now I can capture it. This is empty, it's got a little bit in the bottle. I'll show you how it works. So I've connected up, you saw me do that, that stuff at the bottom there. I've connected that up, which goes up to the pump, which is on the wall which then goes up this hard copper pipe I put in last time to the tap. Now, it wouldn't matter if there was a battery there all the time. I could also replace that battery with a permanent power charger. But you only need to run this very, very, very occasionally. Maybe a couple of times a year. So it doesn't matter. Anyway, so in theory, when I open that tap, that should fill the system full of water and all the waste should come out of there and then we've got a complete circuit the other bonus to that which i hadn't really thought about it also clears the air out of the system i hadn't thought about that so here we go open in now pump comes on and then once it builds pressure you'll see that the overflow that used to go straight to drain is now going to come out of that pipe at the same rate as which it's being pumped in and will be held in this tank. So this now becomes our new overflow tank, which does have an outlet to drain. God forbid if we ever manage, well if you've overflowed this then you've done something wrong. That's the idea of this. Right, and then what I'll do is I'll get a stick dipstick so that I can measure the fluid down here. And it takes out the guesswork. And that's a circuit complete. So that's a success. So it's been a three week saga on that. Now I can, uh, I'm can. i in a position that uh, as soon as the temperature rises sufficiently, that light's not on, as soon as the temperature rises, rises sufficiently, I can do those other plumbing jobs where I've got to uh, break into the main system to take spurs off for new radiators, as if I had any of them. It's a good job. That ends that video, that ends that project. Thanks for watching me. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.